everyone, it's Darby from RejoiceAndCreate.com and I have a very quick project for you today because this is what I'm working on and these are money envelopes. Now I started with this one because I was playing around with the wonderful Wildflowers uh, stamp set from Katherine Pooler and if you go to KatherinePooler.com you can find it there if you're interested. It's a bold two-step stamp for uh, uh, wildflowers and they look really pretty. So I went ahead and stamped that one out and uh, made a little bit of a money envelope with this one and all you do is open the top it's tucked behind the sentiment and you can put your money in and this one is kind of generic for uh, maybe a house sitter a pet sitter or, or any other occasion you want to gift somebody some money and um, I went ahead and put that together and then I thought that the wildflower looks kind of like a poinsettia so I went ahead and tried to make a Christmas one I made handmade with love which I thought was kind of funny because it's money in there of course I didn't make money and um, these papers were from the uh, Tim Holtz Christmas collection. And I know it sounds funny when I say Christmas. Uh, the colors are, are pretty pretty generic. I mean, this is kind of a green and kind of a red, but they're I think overall they could be used for many different holidays as well if you pick out the right pattern that doesn't have anything that gives the Christmas theme away. But I'm working on money holders for graduates and I thought it would be a great idea. So this time I'm going to use another Christmas paper from Tim Holtz that actually doesn't look too much like a Christmas paper. And it is this one, uh, kind of a craft color with some red stars on it because certainly our graduates are stars. So you start with a piece of paper that's 8 inches by 7 inches and if there's an up and a down, make sure that the up, the top, is a 7 and a half inch. And then I have a one, two and three eighths inch uh, stitch circle and this is one of the Stampin' Up! stitch circles. Now instead of doing the flower I'm going to do the little graduate hat and for that you'll need a three quarters of an inch black strip and this is to make the top part of it probably about three inches long but you're going to cut your uh, t the top of the mortarboard out of it. And then you'll also need another scrap for the bottom part, and I'll show you how I made that one. And I'm also going to use the Reach for the Star sentiment. Because I have the star paper, I thought it would be perfect. You can go to tailoredexpressions.com if you wish to find the Shining Star sentiments. Alright, so let's show you how to do the money envelope. Start with the 7.5 inch side up, and this should be your top end if you have a directional pattern on your paper. And go ahead and score at 3.5 inches and at seven inches but because I know it's seven and a half I'm just going to scoot that one over to the half inch. Alright so go ahead and turn to the side and I have my top part to the left. Go ahead and score it at an inch and a quarter and then score your bottom at a half an inch. So I have a half an inch over here for the bottom. Okay. All right, fold and burnish your score line. Okay, so we have two long rectangles here and a half an inch on the side, and that half an inch is the glue tab for the side. And then you have a one and a quarter inch strip on the top and a half an inch strip on the bottom, and that's the glue tab for the bottom. So what we're going to do first, if there's this tiny rectangle on the top, we're going to take that off. And you can angle this cut a little bit and then cut straight down on this one. Now because we're going to put it together like this, this will be our flap that folds over. So that one will keep and go ahead and cut down on the side of that one and then we're going to cut off this one completely. And you could do this on the trimmer as well, or you could certainly use a pair, a longer pair of scissors to make it very neat. Okay. All right, now because we're going to be folding it over like this, we don't need this part of the tab as well, only the half an inch on the same piece as the top flap. So go ahead and cut that off. And when you cut this one off, go ahead and cut up above the score line just a little bit because that will let your bottom flap fold over easier. So I just cut that whole score line off. And then go ahead and angle that a little bit. 
and then we'll angle this side a little bit try to try to match it up it's not you don't have to be exact and then we'll cut that off all right so this will be our top flap and I'm going to just cut these both off at a slight angle and I'm going to try to make it look similar it doesn't have to be exact I think I have to go over a little bit on this one okay that looks pretty good all right so let's go ahead and put our glue on this side I'm using the Tombow extreme to hold it well and we'll fold that up and fold this part over And if you wanted to, you could cut like a little notch or a circle out of there as well. I think I can still fit mine in. You should have done that before you glued it together though. But I can still fit to do a little notch. All right, and now we'll glue the bottom tab up. And I'm gonna burnish all that well. I'm also going to just just curl this a little bit so it's easier to tuck it into it when I put my flap down all right so let me put that aside for a second we'll work on our sentiment so I'm going to use the trimmer to create the top hat of my mortar board let me put that back there so you can see this it's actually cut at an angle but the width of the strip is three quarters of an inch and how I did that was I took a three quarter inch strip and I lined it up pretty much diagonally. If you line it up across the diagonal intersections, you will get a 45 degree. So I'm going to line the end just over there and I'm going to line all these up on, a, on any consecutive 45 degree uh, intersections. Okay, so you can see I'm lined up all the way there. You can see it look like a step. All right, so go ahead and put that down and cut. And then what you want to do is just to move this cut line over to the three quarters of an inch mark. And if you line that up, it should also line up on the diagonal. It should be on the same diagonal, uh, diagonal angle. And you're cutting parallel to that first cut you made. And that gives you a nice, pretty much looks like a diamond for the top of your mortar board. Now let me put that down and I'm going to get out my one and three eighths inch punch. Now for the hat part of it, the part that sits on the head, I took a one and three eighths inch punch and on a piece of scrap, I just cut up right next to each other, two partial circles until I had something that looked like this. And then I took it and I went probably about more than half. I put that shape in there until it was almost, it was half and a little bit more and kind of in the center. So the point was kind of in the center and just punched it and that gave me the bottom of my graduation cap all right to put the hat to the mortar board i just put a glue dot on the top and i just centered this where i wanted it to be to make my tassel i went and took a piece of um this is a metallic twine Baker's twine and I went and just put two of them together or fold it in half and I turned it around and just tied an overhand knot and I snugged that knot down real tight. Now what I did next was made sure after that I made sure that was tight I went ahead and cut right next to that knot I cut one of the legs or one of the legs off of it like that. So I part of that loop part of it, I have that free string now. Now this other one, I went ahead and cut not quite where I wanted, a little bit longer than my tassel because I was going to cut it down yet again. I was going to trim it once I finished taking my piercing tool and just opening up those twine, opening up the twine, the fibers apart from each other to make it look more tassel-y. And I like the metallic threads in there. If it if they don't stick out too much, sometimes on a couple of mine they stuck out too much, so I had to cut them off. But um, it looks really cute. And now what I'll do is I'll just put my finger there and I'll cut it down to the length I want it. 
All right, so there's my tassel. All right, so next I kind of put it where I wanted to see it and I'll cut the end off right there, just a little bit longer. Put a dot of glue right in the center. And then I kind of smashed my end of my thread down into it. So it opens up the end of the thread a little bit and it will hold that down there. Let me zoom down, let me move it up just a little bit. There we go. And I still have some of these uh, neutral candy dots from Stampin' Up! and I'm going to use one of the black ones. So let me grab it off and I'll use it from a button on the top of my mortar board right over the end of the thread. If you don't have any, all you have to do is take a circle, a quarter inch circle punch and punch yourself another piece of black out of your black cardstock and use that instead. All right, so here's my two and three quarter inch cardstock. And because the red I have that matches this the best is cherry cobbler, that's what I'm gonna use. So I'll stamp up your reach for the stars. And I'm gonna stamp it over to the right a little bit. Oh, I got your superstar. <laughs> that would work too. But here I have another backup. So let me go ahead and stamp the one I wanted which was reach for the stars. All right, let me use a couple of glue dots to go ahead and put my graduation cap on over there. And let me go ahead and put a few more stars on there because I want to embellish it a bit. So I have just a little star punch and these stars are probably about a half an inch. And let me go ahead and glue dot theirs on there as well. So how I put this on there was I went ahead and put my flap down and I put a piece of foam tape that was just smaller than the width of the circle and I put it in the center just below the flap and I gave it maybe an eighth of an inch just so you could get it underneath there. So go ahead and take that up and put that right centered on there. All right next I wanted a little bit more dressing up on there. I took some of that same baker's twine and I ran it a few times more underneath. And just run it under for now and we can um, separate them out in just a minute. And what I did is just tied a little knot over here. And then you go ahead and cut that. And you can leave it as it is, but I kind of like that little frayed tassel -y look, so I went ahead and did the same thing with this. I ran my tool through it and pulled it apart with my fingers until it made a nice little frizzly thing on this one as well. Okay, now to finish off and so that it wouldn't bend down there, I just took one more little piece of foam tape and just tucked it right under the end of that sentiment. And I think that makes a really cute gift. You can go ahead and put your money in there, put a little card or a note in there as well, and then tuck this up under the flap to close it. And how sweet for a graduation present that would be. Let me bring my other ones back in. And here are my other two as well. And you can use them for any occasion. Just change out your paper and your sentiments. And it's a wonderful way to give a little bit of money or a gift certificate or a note and a gift card to a graduate or anyone for any occasion. I hope you enjoyed the project today and give it a try. If you wish to see other videos as they come out, subscribe and please press the bell notification so you can be notified when I put videos out. If you need any more information, stop by rejoiceandcreate.com. And as always, until we meet again, I hope your days are blessed. Bye!